Right, so let's start with some history. Before we do that, on the tops of the waves, beautiful light. And look, you get this absolutely gorgeous effect. Check this out. This, I love this picture. The reason I love it, obviously apart from this great little boathouse here and this castle and this gorgeous sky, but the reason I love it is that I've spent a lot of time on this island. It's in the northeast of England called Lindisfarne. And that. <laughs> oh well, that is what we are going to look at today. So let's start with some history. In the year AD 634, there was a guy called Oswald. His dad had been a king a long time before and he had been in exile, fast forward to the year 634, he goes to somewhere called um, Heavenfield or Havenfield, something like that. And he is coming to take back his kingdom or his dad's kingdom. Um, his dad had been king once. So he fights and he wins and he becomes the king in Northumbria. And he takes over this enormously beautiful castle um, on that coastline there called Bambra Castle. If you look at that and you see it on the map, if you, I've been there many times to photograph it and it's just beautiful. So he takes over this castle, but his people are, they're pagans, they are um, of that era, they are poor, they don't read and write. There's just, you know, it's, it's AD 634. He decides, well, back in my history, I remember these monks and they taught people, they helped to feed people. Let's get them over and let's get them to help, to kind of look after my kingdom. So he calls for them. In the end, a guy, Aidan, comes from Iona, all the way over, and he brings a team, a group of monks with him. And they need somewhere to base themselves. So he says, well, how about you go over there to Linda's farm? Linda's farm is one of many islands, I think it's like 27 islands or something, in, off of the coast of Northumberland. And you can have Linda's farm. Linda's farm, is a tidal, a tidal island, which means twice a day, tide goes in, tide goes out as it does. So twice a day, it becomes an island. The rest of the time, when the tide goes out, there's a beautiful kind of causeway where you can now drive over, but they used to walk over a thing called the Pilgrim's Walk, where you'd walk on the mud flats between um, the mainland and Linda's farm. Anyway, they then set up their, their monastery there and they are um, praying, they're growing crops, herbs, they're looking after people, they're going onto the mainland when the tide goes out and they're feeding people. And there's this kind of golden age in Northumberland where Aidan and then um, Cuthbert um, are kind of in charge on Linda's farm and they work with the king and there's this kind of peaceful time there. Um, and then Cuthbert ends up going to move out to Inner Farm, which is one of the farm islands you can see from um, Bambra and from Linda's farm. Anyway, he goes out, he lives there, and there he's surrounded by the North Sea. He's got huge winds, incredible winds, bashing that and crashing that, um, that island. Uh, he's surrounded by those winds. He's surrounded by, um, obviously, bad weather. He's got the beautiful bird life living on that island. You've got the Eider Ducks who really became his friends and used to follow him around. And obviously the puffins come and go and I've been to that island and it's just amazing. The only problem with the inner farm is that when you um, go on it, the, uh, the Arctic terns, the birds, they, um, they nest on that island and they nest on now on the pathway right by where um, Aidan uh, Cuthbert used to live. They now nest along the pathway and they attack you when you go on the island. I've been attacked by those birds many times and I've been pecked 
and I'll tell you, it hurts. Um, so it's quite an interesting time if you go in the spring, but you do get some great photos and you do get to see some incredible wildlife on Staple Island in a farm. If you get to come to this patch of Northumberland, it's one of our best kept secrets, which I guess now is not so much of a secret, but you have got enormous um, stretches of white sand. You have got incredible wildlife. You have got Linda's farm, which is the thing I really wanted to tell you about, is an island that is just like, it's peaceful, it's beautiful, but it's like a photographer's playground if you love landscape photography, because you've got a castle, you've got a harbour, you've got wildlife, you've got beautiful stretches of um, empty beaches, you've got enormously wild weather with rainbows and massive storms, big clouds, you've got um, little islands that you can capture, you've got seals that sing this the most amazing kind of haunting sound. You can hear them during the day and at night time. You've got these big mud flats. You've got this amazing um, area where the, when the tide comes in and uh, cars sometimes get washed away, you have to be careful to follow the guidelines of the tide times. And some people don't and their cars get washed away. Um, so you have to be careful, but there are these great kind of areas where you can uh, kind of, I guess, climb up a ladder and, and wait out the tide. They look great at sunset and sunrise for um, photos. So you've got an island that's just basically full of different um, engaging um, uh, subjects for landscape photography. And you can walk around this island easily in a few hours. I've done it many times. And, and we stayed there so many times and you just, it's beautiful. It's absolutely peaceful. And uh, there's just so much to photograph. So it's kind of like one of my, it's one of my favorite places to photograph, but in terms of just trying to say to people when they come to this country, or if you're, if you're already here and you've not been up to Lindisfarne, you've not been up to Northumberland to photograph um, the landscape, I just want to say it is incredible. And uh, I've featured that in my, um, my book, Beauty in the Wild, which is somewhere here. And uh, in this book, about this photograph is in the book, and there are a few other, I won't tell you now, but anyway, in here, if you get this um, website's there, you can see, um, have a look and see some of the, uh, the pictures from there. But yeah, it's a fantastic place. And um, I think one of the best spots in um, England to do landscape photography. Anyway, there we are. I should go and fix my, <laughs> fix my whiteboard. <laughs> Cheers. you get this absolutely gorgeous effect. And uh, you see the back of my camera here, the photo just looks incredible. This stunning, stunning picture. So many thousands of birds here that it actually makes a really good landscape photo you know sometimes we focus a lot on getting the individual kind of portrait shot of the puffin or uh, another birds but actually such a vast array of birds but i'm using this this graduated filter to balance the sky and the scene of the birds the sky is very bright behind and so rather than have the birds in silhouette i want to bring out the detail of the sky but at the same time capture uh, these um these birds. So I'm using this graduated filter to uh, lock on the horizon and then bring out the, uh, the colour of the birds and uh, it looks beautiful, really sharp and uh, really kind of uh, pops out of the frame. <laughs> 